oxygen, but water, the kind of oxygen which has the most hydrogens on it. Not nitrogen, but ammonia, one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms, the kind of nitrogen which has the most hydrogen attached to it. Not carbon dioxide, but methane, one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. If we mix those gases together, as in the third experiment here, supply some energy and let it go for a while, we produce the most astonishing stuff and have made a major step and have made a major step towards the origin of life. We're showing here an experiment done with a lightning or electrical discharge as the energy source, but in other experiments, for example, in this one, in our laboratory at Cornell University, there is an ultraviolet light source. You can see the transparent flask at the beginning of the experiment, but at the end of the experiment, we have a flask filled with brownish powdery stuff. What is this brownish powdery stuff? It is essentially all of the molecules on the table in front of me. We have made a great variety of organic molecules. The necktie that you saw there was for color comparison purposes only. It, uh, we cannot do an experiment in which we start out with the gases and waters of the primitive Earth, and at the end of the experiment, somebody crawls out of the test tube. We haven't done that yet. But what we can do is make all of the amino acids, all of the building blocks of the nucleic acids, and even hook them up to make short proteins and short um, nucleic acids. Now, the rabbit that we talked about early in the lecture, no one can make. There isn't enough time to start such an experiment and wind up with, uh, let's say, a rabbit. As uh, you might imagine, uh, I need a volunteer for this part of the experiment, please. Um, now, it would be lovely if we could make any organism, but the, remember how complex the organism was and how simple these molecules are. There simply isn't enough time. But maybe such a thing might someday be possible. Could you please examine this hat and show that it's empty? Oh, uh, it's not empty. There is in it a molecule of cysteine. See, it's yellow. It's a sulfur-containing amino acid. Could you now please see if, it's, if the hat is empty? Yes. It's empty. I'm, I'm, I'm not good at this. I, see, it's empty, and I'm supposed to show you that it does that. And now I have to open it up again. There was a way I forgot. There, there it opens up. Now, put the empty hat down. Could you please check that there's uh, the table is OK? There's nothing around there. Oh, well, OK. <laughs> yes, that's certainly empty enough. Um, could you now check that the, the hat is still, is still empty? Good, thank you. And now, could we please pull off? And here, thank you. In fact, I'll give you this rabbit in just a minute to hold. If you sit down for a minute, I'll bring him over to you. This is what we can't make. But we've only just started. These kinds of experiments have only been underway for something like 30 years. Once we have a few hundred million years to do such experiments as nature has, perhaps we will be able to get as far as a microbe, if not a rabbit. Thank you. You get to keep them until the end of the talk. I've always wanted to wear one of these. We don't have them in America, so I'm going to wear this for a while. Now, maybe you remember the, looks kind of funny. <laughs> maybe you remember the kind of brownish, powdery stuff which was inside 
that uh, last experimental flask. That material has a characteristic color. It's always made in these experiments. And therefore, it's very interesting that there is a place in the solar system where such coloration is present extremely vividly. And that's in the outer solar system in the vicinity of Jupiter. Now, here is an old, I think, 17th century picture of people looking up with an early telescope. And there in the sky is Jupiter. And you can see, even in this early picture, there's a little bit of brownish coloration. And you can see three or four of the four big or Galilean satellites of Jupiter. If we look at a more modern picture, this is a Pioneer 11 photograph of Jupiter. We see the beautiful bands and belts, the belts colored brown. You can also see the uh, great red spot, so-called because it's orange. Um, you can see white clouds. In fact, everything we're looking at here is clouds and atmosphere. There is no surface to be seen. If there is a surface, it's far below. What is the source of the coloration in such a picture? We can look more closely. And here's another. This is about the, close, the closest up picture of Jupiter we have. There's no question about the brown color. In fact, it's very similar in detail to the uh, detailed spectroscopic signature to what we make in the laboratory. What is this stuff? Well, the atmosphere of Jupiter is hydrogen rich. It has hydrogen, water, methane, and ammonia. Ultraviolet light comes in from the sun. There probably are electrical discharges, lightning, in the atmosphere. Jupiter is a place very much like this third experiment. These same organic molecules ought to be made on Jupiter. And perhaps the brownish coloration is telling us that such organic molecules are indeed there. Here is a picture shot from beneath, looking up towards the south pole of Jupiter down at the bottom. And if we look more closely at such a region, we see astonishing bubbles, cyclones, storm systems. The great red spot, in fact, is probably a storm system which has been in existence for a million years, a hurricane that has lasted for a million years. The weather on Jupiter is astonishing. And we can learn an enormous amount about climate, weather, circulation of atmospheres by looking at Jupiter precisely because it's a different kind of place from here. Here is an artist's conception of the clouds of Jupiter. You can see high up in the atmosphere the white clouds, which we believe are condensed ammonia, frozen ammonia crystals, just as the upper atmosphere of the Earth has frozen water crystals. And then below is the reddish or brownish stuff, which may be is organic molecules. And you can also see that the artist has put a few lightning bolts in at lower right, just to remind us that there is some energy there. Now, the clouds of Jupiter can be calculated to be something like this. Here we have, up at the top, the solid ammonia. The next layer is a kind of mixture of ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. Below that is a cloud layer of ice. And below that is a cloud layer of aqueous ammonia, a little bit like the household ammonia solution that people use to uh, disinfect. Now, the temperature of the household ammonia on Jupiter is about room temperature. Now, I know room temperature is different in the United States and than in Britain, but uh, the two are close enough. Uh, Jupiter has a place where there is lots of liquid water, which is at room temperature, uh, and where organic matter is falling from the sky like manna from heaven. Now, that is a place at least interesting in terms of biology. We do not know if life has evolved on Jupiter, but it's clear that organic chemistry can proceed on Jupiter, at least for a period of time. Could there be living organisms on Jupiter? We do not know. There have been speculations about it. And here is one particularly ugly artist's conception of what life on Jupiter might be like. Here we imagine enormous creatures like whales swimming.